Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to show you guys how to install Raspberry Pi OS on EXI on ARM for the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I want to give a huge shout out to virtualghetto.com as well as What in Inside's Twitter account. These are the two main people that you might want to follow if you want to get more into EXXI, especially Virtual Ghetto's website where he actually has a lot of tutorials on getting certain things to work on this environment. If you guys haven't seen my tutorial a couple of weeks ago about installing EXXI on Raspberry Pi, I'll leave a link on the top left corner on one of these spots and the description down below. Now, you might have also noticed that when you're trying to install an operating system onto EXXI, you re are required an installer. So say like you want to install it or Debian. And those are really the images that we can do right now. But there are a lot of images for Raspberry Pi like Armbian, RetroPie, DietPie, or even Raspberry Pi OS that we could use on EXXI. But there is no installer for it. So what do we do? Now, the main key factor that it's missing is a bootloader, more specifically Grub on those images. Even though it's a raw disk image, we still require a bootloader for it to boot. Knowing that it's missing that one key factor, you could basically install any image you want that works for ARM64, including Arch Linux, but that's a different story because it doesn't come as a raw disk image. Anyway, in today's video, I'm just gonna be showing you guys how to convert the raw disk image into a VMDK, and then we're gonna install Grub bootloader onto those so we could get the operating system working. So let's begin. Here we have my desktop, which is the Pi 400. You guys know I always use this now. And I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below to all the stuff we talk about. Mainly what we need is the Raspberry Pi Buster ARM64 image. Mainly this is, uh, I think, a 64-bit kernel with 32-bit user land, but it has the stuff that we need to get it installed. Next, we also need to download a Debian net install ISO so we can actually get into the installer so we can install Grub. So these are the two things we need to download. So what I did was download, which is the latest version right over here. And then I ended up downloading the net install, the smallest size, 250 megabytes. And that is about it. Now, once you're done downloading, which I already did, I'm going to open up the terminal. And let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And we're going to head right over to our downloads folder. And here I have the image, which is uncompressed already because I didn't want to waste your guys time and uncompressing it. So I already unzipped it. This comes out to be about, I think, uh, three gigabytes in file. Yeah, 3.6 gigabytes. All right. So what we need to do is QEMU-IMG. Now, I don't have the program here. The command is not found. So what we need to do is sudo apt install QEMU-utils. Once you download that, you'll have the utilities to change the image or convert the image. After everything's done downloading, what I'm going to do is list the folder just to make sure that this is the file that we're going to be converting. And I'm going to do QEMU-IMG convert. And file format that's coming in is raw. And it's going to be called 20-something IMG. And we are going to convert it to 20-something. But instead, we're going to change the extension from IMG to vmdk hit enter and this is going to convert that image into vmware's disk all right so once this is done uh, you could just upload it to your vmware environment now i canceled out of this because i already pre-done this so we don't have to watch this five minute things of doing stuff so i'm going to log into my exxi environment for arm and once you're in head over to your data store data store browser and you can upload the images that you just made which is the debian that we installed for the net install as well as the 2008 raspbian pi os now the next step is optional and that's from converting it to a thick provisioning to a thin provisioning and if you guys don't know what that is uh, thick provisioning is basically the disk image itself say you sized it to 10 gigabytes but it only has about three gigabytes of information in there either way it's still going to be a 10 gigabyte file now if you convert it to a thin provisioning uh, even though you have a 10 gigabyte storage file and you only have three gigabytes of data in there the file size is only going to be three gigabytes so it's uh preferable to use thin provisioning so you don't take up all the storage on your drive itself but that's up to you i recommend doing it so i'm going to show you how to do that real quick this way if you guys do decide to take this optional step you can now I'm gonna close out of this, head over to manage, go over to services itself and you have to enable SSH because that's the only way you could do this. 
Scroll down to uh, SSH right over here and you can see for me it's already running but if you guys have it stopped you could just enable it and have it running. And then we could SSH into it. So I'm gonna SSH root into my IP address of my EXXI. And all right, now that we are in the shell, we wanna to go to VMFS, go into volumes, and then there's data store right there. And if you LS, you would have this image that we converted and uploaded. Now we wanna do VMF, VMK FS tools, okay? Then I for the file that you're gonna input, which is the 2020, that one. And then we wanna do dash D thin, and then the output file you wanna call it. So I'm gonna call it the same thing, but I am gonna remove the numbers. So, so it'd be Raspberry Pi OS dash Buster. There we have it. This actually takes like a minute or two to get it done, so it's really quick. Once that is done, we could actually close out of this because it converted it already. And let's go back into our virtual machines and create our virtual machine. So I'm gonna to go to create and register. Uh, next, and I'm gonna call this RPI OS. Select family, it's Linux version. It's gonna be, I think Debian 10, I think. Next, we'll select the data store we wanna store it in. It's gonna create the settings here and we have to actually remove the hard drive because we don't, we're not using this one. So we could remove this and we're gonna add a hard disk, existing hard disk. And then we're gonna select this one because it's the one with the thin provisioning. Select, uh, allocate the RAM that you want for it. Uh, but we do need to add the CD drive, which is the data store ISO. And we need to do the Debian select and you could basically leave everything as is for now because uh, we will still need to actually uh, enlarge the hard drive a little bit later after we install grub so once we're done with this hit next and it's ready hit finish and we are ready to boot up let me maximize this because i might be able to get a better screen i'm going to power this on and there we go Okay, so we booted up in the Debian net install. Where's my mouse? And the first thing we need to do is go into advanced option and rescue mode. You're gonna answer a few questions here that doesn't really matter because it doesn't pertain to the actual operating system itself, but we do need to answer these questions to get it up and going. So, you know, your hard drive, I mean, uh, the keyboard, language, stuff like that. Okay. Hit continue, domain name, hit okay. Uh, Eastern, again, this all doesn't matter because it doesn't affect anything when you install it after you boot it up. So what you wanna do, root file system is on device number two because this is the boot partition and the second partition would be your actual Raspberry Pi. That's the one you wanna install and do you wanna mount boot partition separately? Yes. Now we could execute a shell in SDA2 and bam, you have your little uh, prompt over here. And this is actually your Raspberry Pi environment. First thing I'm gonna do is sudo apt update just to grab the repositories and everything. You do have a little bit of space to play around with. Uh, this way it has enough space to actually give you uh, to install Grub. You might find other images like Diet Pi or something like that that is out of space. You would have to enlarge the hard drive first. Okay, so I'm gonna do sudo apt install Linux dash image dash ARM64 and grub EF UEFI dash AR ARM64. I believe that's UEFI. I might be wrong. It might be just U e EFI. Let me see. Okay, it is just EFI. All right, once you install those two things. All right, now we are ready to uh, install Grub. To do that, we do grub install EFI directory equals slash boot. 
and it's going to install grub onto your boot partitions over there and that's it and now we're going to do grub update grub and that is about it all we have to do now is just reboot so i'm going to exit this drop back into the shell reboot the system and now you have your grub bootloader that's going to boot into Raspbian. I'm going to load up the regular grub or Debian, what it's called. And there we have it, guys. Raspberry Pi OS onto our ESXi environment. And okay, I'm not done yet because one of the things we want to do, I'm going to shut this down real quick. Okay. And I am going to expand the hard drive. Obviously, what we need to do here is change this hard drive size. Right now it's 3.5 gigs. So we're going to change it to say 10 gigs. And then next, what you want to do is actually disconnect this because, oh, it's already disconnected. So we don't really need to worry about that. Save. It should expand the hard drive to 10 gigs. We're going to power it back on. Raspberry Pi is not going to see it yet until you expand the hard drive. And you know, normally the first boot would do that on an SD card. But in our case, we would actually have to run the, I think the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi expand or something. Okay, that boots up pretty quick. I'll pop over here. And I think the command is Raspi, nope, RPi, nope. Maybe it's in Raspberry config. Okay, yeah, I think it is in Raspberry Pi config. And uh, let me see. There you go. It's in advanced options, expand file system. There you go. And now if I go to finish, no, I don't need to reboot. If I go to df.h, you should see, I guess I do need to reboot, but yeah, take a look at this. Right now it's at three gigabytes. And if I sudo reboot, because obviously the hard drive is 9.8, right? I'm going to reboot. I should be able to get my 9.8 gigabytes back. All right, let's take a look. DF-H. And there we have it. Available 6.2. You know, total size 9.6. It should be 9. But, you know, the calculations are different. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys are planning to install other images like Diet Pi or Armbian, this is the way to go. On my next EXXI video, I plan to do something about licensing on how to get free licensing for the ESXI. So you might want to subscribe and tune in for that. If you guys have any questions about this particular video, please hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.